Well, joining us live in the studio to further discuss the insecurity challenges in the country is Mr. Dixon Osage, an international security consultant. Good afternoon and thank you for coming on the program. Nice being here. Now, when you look at the recent activities of the terrorists now, would you say that we're actually making any progress in winning the fight against terrorism? Uh, for me, uh, given by your security metrics and uh, uh, the long uh, drone war from 2019 date, uh, we're not making progress. I have just seen it as if uh, the Nigerian military has been having a kind of friendly match, uh, battle-friendly match uh, with this insurgent uh, because they are occupying our territorial space. Uh, when you, in a given nation, uh, terrorism is a war that you need to, uh, you know, uh, go in uh, with all seriousness. You need to take it as a necessary war, uh, because the sole objective of this terrorist group is to hit at the government. Uh, most of the uh, victims that uh, we see uh, flying around 43, 4700, whatever, uh, the objective of terrorist group is to strike the government. So government must see themselves as victim of terrorism. Uh, because a terrorist doesn't have any business to do with me, uh, I could be a collateral damage in the activities of terrorism. But the government are the sole uh, uh, victim of terrorism. Uh, for me, uh, what the military needs to do now is to adopt supreme excellence. Uh, supreme excellence is the sense that uh, it's not all about uh, 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 weapons or arms and ammunition. Uh, terrorism is, uh, is, is sensitive in this uh, our own climb. Uh, we need to look at the sociological factors as well that are precipitating the occasion of these uh, criminal activities. When you look at the precipitating factors, go into sociological factors, for example, a lack of education, uh, 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 illiteracy, uh, because for me to invest my own energy to, you know, slit human truth tells you of the level in which I've been brainwashed. That is ideological mechanism. Uh, the uh, government also, from the strategic level, because basically we have three levels uh, in countering of terrorism, the strategic level, the operational level, and the tactical level. Now, what we need to look at is this uh, 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 strategic level. Our strategic center of gravity needs to uh, sit up. That is the Office of the National uh, Security Advisor of the President. It needs to call the military to order. Because uh, in a given nation where we have over 200 million people and some group of criminal element terrorists uh, activities in, in every day and now are holding our military in uh, a hostage is regrettable. So what about uh, information now? Of course, we had the defense spokesman, Major General John Inenche, saying that most the host communities are not given adequate information to the security agencies. Why could this actually be the case? Why are they not given information? It's not their fault, or it's never their fault, because uh, the war has lasted for so long, and they've seen that the military have given the uh, insurgent enough time to share muscle with them, you know, to, you know, you know, to like measure their, their, uh, their strength with the military. So just what we call community resilience. Community resilience is for the community coming as a chain uh, to resist the act of terrorism. But that res resilience chain has been broken by Boko Haram many years ago because they have seen soldiers running away from Boko Haram attack. They have seen a security agency running away from Boko Haram, at Boko Haram attack. They've seen Boko Haram hitting hard on military targets because the Boko Haram guys, their tactical strategy and their political strategy is to deflate the military to hit hard on the military target. That is to dissipate their, their morale. And they have somewhat succeeded in doing so sometimes. And that is why the strategic level, the Office of the National Security Advice, I should call the Nigerian Army to order to address their tactical strategies. You know, sometimes they go address this tactical strategy in the sense that if you are taking a soldier to the front line, tell him when he's coming back home to reunite with his family. You can't go to the battlefield without knowing you're coming back. The level in which you activate your morale to engage the enemy is for a given period of time, not one, not two, not three years. Yeah, we see our soldiers spending three, four, five years in the battlefield under rain or sun. That is an intentional operational sabotage. And commanders or commanding officers or brigade commanders that are leaving their men in the front line beyond nine months should all be arrested. We are talking about national security. In national security, you don't give room for, for, for jeopardy. You don't give room for sabotage. Our security agencies must work up to the tax because this is causing us a lot of reputational damage from the international community. And it's also going to affect our gross domestic product as well because people want to come to Nigeria and invest. But security-wise, they are not confident that Nigeria is a safer place for them to operate. So the military must activate supreme excellence to ensure that they get hold of these guys. You don't allow this enemy to take hold of you at any given time. Go before the enemy. Don't allow them to regroup. What is happening now? During the Biaf uh, Biafran War, we knew some strategies that the military adopted. Now, I would advise the Nigerian army to look into the resourcing the enemy. Because one of the greatest uh, 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 um, asset uh, business in which you venture in, capital-wise, 
Terrorism is very expensive. Their return of investment is uh, are human lives. That is their return of investment. Their capital-based benefit is for them to, you know, just cause pain, destroy, destroy the territory, ensure they send a sign of, uh, of fear to the public. So we need to go back to the drawing board and engage these guys back to back, look into their own tactical strategy as well. Most of their strategy is hit and run, ambush, and the attack. The military should leave the defense. Go before the enemy. Don't allow them to regroup. The resources of the enemy is very essential mm. because how do they have the resources? That's where terrorism financing comes to play. Who are the sponsors of, of terrorism? The Central Bank of Nigeria were very, very energetic some few, ways, few days back to close some uh, protesters' account that they were sponsoring mm. at the NSAS. Here we have Central Bank of Nigeria. We want them to also go into the dark network to see where this sponsorship is coming. That is the only way you can de-resource the insurgents. If you can't de-resource the insurgents, they will keep having more funds to you know, energize their struggles. Now, 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 one thing that struck me, I'm sure you also listened to the Minister of Information where he talks about uh, attempts at denying Nigeria access to pieces of sophisticated uh, military hardware. Why should this even be happening? Well, for me, the hardware is not the issue. You know, people just feel uh, the hardware is the issue. If the hardware is the issue, that means terrorism is all about killing your enemy. Killing your enemy does not bring an end to terrorism. The end result to terrorism is a state of positive peace. Medjugorje is today, part of Medjugorje are experiencing negative peace. Now, we talk too much in our climb. When I was coming to this studio, I tuned into my radio and I heard uh, one or two persons talking about the Tucano jet we're expecting from America. We, don't, we talk too much. We need to look into deception. Deception is one of the key leading factors in any success in the war front. Your enemy must not measure your strength. They must not measure your capability. They must not measure your, car, your Tucano. Right. If we're expecting 10 Tucano, let them know we're expecting 100 Tucano. If you have 100 men in the front line, let your enemy know you have 10,000 men. If you are short of ammunition, let your enemy knows they have more ammunition. That right. is deception. We need to look into deception and stop talking too much. We talk too much. All right, we'll see. Uh, thank you so much. It's been quite an interesting conversation with you, Mr. Dixon Osaji, an international security consultant. Thank, thank you for, for having me. Thank you.